Sergeant Troy. I'm Staff Sergeant Van Ham. Both the Bravo Company, first one, second one. Today we're going to be going over the 15 knots. You're going to be learning out that mountain school. What's testable, what fails the most, all the checkpoints. We're going to go over the uh, fixed ropes. This way, you watch the video, you practice your shit. We'll give you a first point, of, first person point of view with the camera, and hopefully you'll have everything you need to know to get through mountain school. Here I take my rope around my anchor, pull my running end around, do an overhand, turn the turn your bike clockwise, pull the bike through, take your running end, do the loop you just created, run it back towards your anchor, and tighten this down right here. Here's your base and bowling right here. So at this point, you have your running end running along the inside of the knot, along the inside of the other end. Now you want to create overhand safety using your running end. Pull it over, back up through, and tighten this sucker down. Pigtail is a little generous, but it needs to be at least four inches long. So about the length of my hand. And that is your end of the line bowling right there. Okay, we're going to be doing the bowling next. You've already seen that, but for the knot test, you're going to be using 7 mil cord. So the purpose of this knot, again, is to create an anchor man of a rope. So throw on over. Overhand turn. Pull your bite through. Put your cord through, or your running end through, excuse me. Tighten to the rope. Pull on this side. There's your bowling. You got to finish it off with the overhand safety. Dress minimum four inch pigtail qualifies. Again, this is for the knot test, but the real application is here at the end of the row. That's secured to the tree. One, two, three, four! We're going to show you how to do a clove hitch. Basically, you use a clove hitch to create an anchor in the middle of a rope. And you're going to need two pieces of equipment. You're going to need a locking carabiner. Make sure that this is tied all the way up when you're done. So this way it's locked. This is unlocked. This is locked. It's got to be locked when you're done. Other piece you're going to use is a piece of 7 mil cord. And that's what we're going to do. So the clove hitch, the purpose of the clove hitch is to create an anchor in the middle of the rope. So the first step is going to be an overhand twist and your cord, followed by another overhand twist in the same direction. On top of one another, place into your carabiner. Always lock your carabiner. Red is dead. And that is your clove hitch. What you'll notice is that the rope's coming over right here. It should look something like that when you're done. Hunter pitch is used to create a mechanical blade. You're going to make another clockwise turn on your rope, take the bite, and you want to just lift it up straight, like so. That's basically your knot, and all you have to do now is just place it in your carabiner. And there it is. Lock your carabiner. So the way this works is you see this locking bar right here that creates a friction so you can Hold tension on this and your load strand here, load strand, brake strand, load, brake. If you hold this, this isn't going anywhere. If you let loose on it, it's going to go. It also reverses. So your load strand can become your brake strand and vice versa. So now the next knot is going to be the girth hitch. Using your 7mm cord, the purpose of the girth hitch is to 
anchor a piece of webbing or cord into an anchor or into a harness. So when creating this knot, you're just gonna throw your bite over, reach through it, grab the rest of your rope, pull it through, and tighten. That's your girth hitch right there. Lock and bar, rope's going through. The next knot is going to be the Prusik. What the Prusik is, it's a knot that you create to create a movable friction hitch on a rope. You're going to be using this knot in the system such as the Kazovac system and the hauling system, the 3 to 1 hauling system. And uh, also for Prusik ascents, like in the well and on the ice wall. So, how you start, just like a girth hitch. Get it tight. Take your locking bar. Bring it up and over, spread, pull this through, tight again, get it all set, and one more time, up, spread, through. Get nice and dressed, that's your Prusik knot. What this does, it slides along a rope. As long as you have it even, but once you jerk on it on the side, it locks. It's holding it right there. All right. This is a double figure eight. This is used to create a fixed loop in the middle of a rope. You're ready to take a bite on your 7 little cord. Pull it over, you're going to pull your bite around the front, through the top. Now, there should be no twists in this knot when you finish it. See right here how this, this rope crosses over the other one? That is a twist, so when you dress it all down, you can spot it right here. Keep going through here, how it doesn't line up. So to, to eliminate the twist in your rope, you want to pancake it like so. So once you get your running end or your bite back up and through, pancake it flat like this. And you're going to take this strand, put it over the top of that one. Take this one, put it over the bottom, and just tighten it like so. No twists. All the cords run along the side of another. Get it nice and dressed down. your double finger. Right, the next knot we're going to do is the figure eight bend. The figure eight bend is used to uh, affix two ends of a rope up to a five millimeter difference. So just like the figure double figure eight, you're going to take your running end over, up and through. So here's your knot. With a different piece of cord, the one I have here, you're going to retrace your knot. So if you notice when I started the knot, I ran it through the inside of this end, and I finished on the inside, or the outside, of this one. So up and through, always staying along the bottom, along the bottom, and back up through right here. And essentially what we've done is we've joined these two pieces of rope. They can't come apart, so we've got two pieces of rope. Bird timing. Time, man. I begin. Yeah, straight out the fucking dungeons of rap. Alright, we're gonna be doing the rerouted figure eight. 
This is used to tie into a climbing harness that I have on right here. So you're going to take your rope, get a good arm's length, and you're going to create a figure eight, just like with the figure eight bend. So you have it here. You're going to go into your harness, pull it tight. And the rope trace knot again. So on the inside, go underneath the bottom of the other loop there, pull through, around the bottom again, and then up and through. Like so. You have a twist free knot, which is one of the checkpoints in this knot in the test. Dress it down. The other, the other checking point is here. You should not be able to fit your hand through this loop whatsoever. With a minimum of a four inch pigtail, which I clearly have here. Yeah, this album is dedicated to all the teachers that told me I never amount to nothing. To all the people that lived above the buildings that I was hustling for. All right, now we're going to tie the Munter Mule. What the Munter Mule does is it creates a releasable anchor knot. So you're going to start off with your rope, doubled up. We're going to create a Munter, just with two strands this time. So you do your underhand twist, overhand right there. Place in the carabiner. Lock your carabiner. Now from here, you know, kind of dress up a little bit. See how it works as a usual munter going both ways. So what we're gonna do here, you have your load strand, you have your brake strand. So we're gonna take from the brake strand, overhand loop, leave it right there. We're going to pull the remaining part of the brake strand through the loop you just made, like so. So from here, you just want to pretty much grab here and tighten. Get it tighter than that. Right, so now you have a, say if you had a load on your load strand, it's not gonna go anywhere. It's locked in. To finish the knot off, like through these loops you just made, pull the remaining part of the brake strand through. And that is your finished monkey reel. Next knot we're going to do is a square knot. The square knot is used to attach the ends of two ropes that are of equal diameter. But it can be done under tension. So to do with the square knot, you start with both your running ends here, one over the other. From here, you take the one that's on top, which is this one, go over and through. And that is your square knot. You should have a loop going through, and a loop again on the other end. To finish this knot for the test for testing purposes, you have to have an overhand safety on each side. So you gotta go over, go up, that's a half inch. It's a half inch again. Is it? You wanna have these dressed to the knot. You wanna have them touching but not distorting the knot. So same thing on this side, and then running end. Safety. Press it down. And again, you want to have them touching the knot and not distorting it anyway. Are you trying to get crazy with this scene? Don't you know I'm loco? loco? Next test, or next knot we're going to do is the water knot. The purpose of the water knot is to join the two ends of tubular webbing, which is what I have here. So to start off, you're going to take your take an end. You're going to come across the back or the front, loop it in through that hole you just made. Don't tighten this down all the way just yet. But here you have one end. So to make sure there's no twist or it's not, uh, make sure it's flat all the way. You're just going to take your hands together. 
cross find your other end. First, so do that again. Take your other end, and you're just going to retrace. So come through the back of this one. Over. Up. And right through here. down. Hold tight. You should have your pigtails coming out the same end and there should be zero twists to your leg. Here is the auto block. This is used to create a movable friction hitch that is releasable under load. So you're going to start with a stone runner and your harness with a locking carabiner. The gate here, you want to make sure is at least an inch away from your carabiner. You want to wrap your stone runner around the rope. One, two, three. Four times. And take your end again here. Back in the carabiner. Lock. So now this is used when you are uh, repelling. Same deal as a Prusik, pretty much. You're not going to go anywhere, but you can move it as long as you have it. Move as a whole. Yo, don't we gotta get this loot up? Where is born, son? Yeah. To all the killers and the hunters. Right, we're gonna start the process of showing you how to uh, do a uh, farmer's coil uh, so you can carry your rope. It's basically used to take your big piece of dynamic or static rope and carry it. So what we want to do is find the two middle of the ropes, two ends of the rope, and you're gonna create a double back stack. So what I always do is get about a good arm's length and I throw that off to the side and then I start piling it up right here. Try to keep your pile as neat as possible. Uh, while you're doing this, you're also just feeling the rope as you feed it through your hands. Make sure like you don't feel anything that's ripped or torn or anything that's stuck in your heart. And what ends up happening is you get the end of your rope. That's the middle of your rope. You're basically taking your hand like this, throw it over your head. Okay? So it's comes through my hand. I'm gonna come over here, grab this one, go as wide as I can, flip it over my head. Grab, now grab the left side, feed it through my hand, bring it over, throw it above. Grab the right side, bring it over. Then you continue this until you got about 12 feet of rope remaining. Just keep throwing it up, nice and neat. Over your head, keeping your thumbs in between the ropes at all times while you're doing this. And... You got about 10 feet of rope there. So then we gotta do is you gotta carefully take this off your head. I'm gonna keep my hand underneath, come up, get it in the middle. Once I do that, you hold it, make sure this is level. If it's not, get it nice and level. I'm gonna grab my rope and I throw it around. Okay, you wanna try to keep it neat so it doesn't fold over. And then when you get here, you've got to go over that rope. Which is not quite too easy, but not too difficult. And then as you wrap it around, <coughs> you want to keep your rope nice and even. And what it's going to do is it's going to keep twisting on you in the back. Just want to keep it untwisted as long as you can. <coughs> and you have to get at least three ropes around this thing. So I always do an extra one just to be safe. And then if I go over here and I count it, I've got one, two, three, 
four sets. And I'm going to take a bite and feed it through feed it through this hole at the top of the rope. Once I do that, I pull this through, pull it through that bite. So this is the end of the rope. Then I can carry it. Now that I've got it, I just want to dress this up. Because your shortest loop, which mine's over here somewhere, has to be within six inches of your lowest root, root, loop. So you basically get your hand in all these loops. So I'm going through all the loops here. Except for this one straggler right here. And then what you want to do is like karate chop it. And then you might be asked to point out your highest and your lowest loop. I guess that's my lowest and this is my highest. They're definitely not six inches apart. I'm going to take this bad boy, swing it over my head. So I kind of got a backpack. Then what I'm going to do is bring it in the back. Wrap it around the rope. I've got a lot of extra rope, so I'm going to do it a second time. Then when you get it around to the front, you're going to tie a square knot. So I'm going right over left. Pulling that bad boy down, left over right. You do not need to do your safeties for this one. So you got two pieces of rope. I'm just going to tuck the excess into my pocket. And now I have a nice little bit of rope. The last just went over all the knots that you're going to be going through your uh, basic knots test at the mountain school. And you guys have all the definitions. So uh, hopefully this finds you well. And if there's any feedback you can provide, we try to do a different point of view, getting the GoPro on the head so you can look down and see what we're actually doing so you don't kind of like mentally like watch the video and do everything backwards in your head. Hopefully it works out. Um, hopefully from this point forward we get no excuses for passing mountain school. Uh, remember, it, it's fucking army man, 70%. Alright, so you just go up there, you fucking practice, you do your shit you're supposed to be doing when you're supposed to be practicing and you should be alright. Uh, we're going to do another video of all the systems. So stay tuned, share with your buddies. If we make any money off this video, which we probably won't, uh, we'll buy beer from the company or something. All right.